coming up on Murky Seb's Wild Underwater Adventures. On today's expedition, we are venturing to check out the creeks in the mountains of Mullaney. Located over an hour north of Brisbane, Mullaney was once a very beautiful mountainous area that unfortunately has been heavily deforested. But there's still a very small patch that follows a river left for us to visit. So come along as we try to find if there's any wildlife left in the rivers of Mullaney. We're checking out the the mountains inland from the Sunshine Coast to try and find what might be living up in these mountain streams. Oh. Haven't found much so far, but let's have a look in this river and see what we can find. After emerging from the dense forest, I was greeted by this beautiful clear river after taking in this wonderful scenery, it was time to take a look under the surface. And right in front of me were all these beautiful glass and long arm shrimp. You can tell the difference between the glass and long arm shrimp because the long arm shrimp are much bigger. And of course, as their name suggests, they have very long arms. Amongst all these shrimp is an aquatic insect called a water boatman, which feed mainly on algae and plant debris. But a few species are predators and will eat little invertebrates. Different types of water boatmen are found all over the world. I moved a bit further up the river to have a look under the water. This plant looks very similar to Elodia and several other plants. I can't actually tell the difference between the two, but I think this is a hydrilla or a water thyme, which can grow up to two meters long and reproduce by fragmentation, just like the Elodia, except Elodia is native to South America and invasive in Australia. But off in the background, we can just see some crimson spotted rainbow fish swimming around, but I couldn't get a good enough look at them. Moving along, we find some interesting red algae, which I keep encountering, but can't find much information on. I think it looks like an ocean plant, but being totally fresh water, it obviously isn't. I was impressed by how clear this water was flowing over the waterfall. Here's some other plants, which are very beautiful, but I don't know the name of. Perhaps if you do, you can let me know by leaving a comment. Scampering about between these awesome plants are some more glass and long arm shrimp. Rifling through the substrate, trying to find their main source of food, which is algae, plant matter, and microorganisms. The closer I looked, the more shrimp I noticed hiding under these plants and leaves. They were all over the place. When it comes time to reproduce, the male will mate with the female, fertilizing her eggs, which she will then hang onto under her tail and constantly fan them with her maxillipedes, which are tiny legs on a shrimp's abdomen and help them swim. They also fan the eggs to keep them oxygenated and free of debris. Then after a week or so, the eggs hatch and tiny shrimp go off to survive, hiding under whatever they can find in the slower moving parts of the river. I saw a field of those interesting red algae-like bunches, which looks mesmerizing, waving in the river's current.
Looking under these rocks, I noticed more and more shrimp the longer I searched. This is certainly the place to be if you're a shrimp. It's full of algae and very few predators to bother your grazing. I really enjoyed the scenery surrounding this river and was lucky enough to see two wonderful ducks. After taking in the beauty of these ducks, it was time to move further up the river. As I'd heard, there was a type of spiny crayfish in here, but I'd also heard they had been all killed by humans. So I was really hoping that wasn't true, and I was really, really determined to try and track one down. After a short walk through this nice little patch of forest, I made it to a secluded part of the river further upstream. And I decided to have a look in here and see what was happening further up the river. Underwater, I saw a school of smelt swimming in the fast flowing current but I couldn't get a good look at them before they swam away. Smelt are an Australian native fish that I'm always excited to encounter. There was also a very old barbed wire fence in the forest, suggesting this forest had recently regrown. There was a small path leading through the forest and I'd moved roughly a kilometre upstream and I couldn't really make it any further because it got too dense in the forest. So I had a look in this pool of water before heading back downstream. Just gotta find my way back onto the trail and searching up this river I haven't managed to find anything so far. It's a fairly dense jungle, but there's a little trail that people clearly use, or maybe maybe some animals use. Let's follow this and hopefully get back to civilization. This was the last waterfall I could get to, and under the rocks right next to the fast flowing water were lots of long armed shrimp, opportunistically feasting on whatever flowed down onto the rocks. I hope you enjoyed coming along on this adventure and learning about this area and the creatures that call it home. Until next time, keep it murky.